Hey, JC, how were you able to stay in the game? It looked like you were in a ton of pain when you went down. Uh, yeah, I mean, it didn't feel good. Kind of got rolled up. Foot got stuck in the ground and twisted around. Um, so it did, didn't feel great in the time. Got off the field, got checked out in the tent. Um, and then I, I tested it, wanted to make sure I was still strong enough to play, and uh, then went back out there. Are you good to go this week? Uh, it should be. I mean, we're going to do what we've always done and just take care of it and, and get a plan in place and just follow the plan. It, was there extra worry because that was a knee that had surgery, right? Uh, I wouldn't say there's extra worry. Uh, we, we did our MRIs and, and feel good about the results and, and just keep moving forward. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Nate Ulrich, you're up next. I just, see it. I'm just wondering uh, the way you described it, getting your foot caught. Is that what you're talking about when you're talking about changing turf to grass? Do you think that was one of the examples? I'd, I'd have to look. The tough thing is um, when it happened, the play, the cameras already had the downfield to follow the throw. So uh, we look at all that stuff at, 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 as the union. Uh, we have people go back and watch the plays, watch how uh, the field interacts, how much of it's contact, how much of it's the turf. Um, so I'd have to look at it and have, have our experts look at it, but I'm not even sure we have a, a, a clear visual of, of what exactly happened uh, in order to take a look at that, that particular injury. So you couldn't tell just from feel? I mean, it, it felt like my, my foot was stuck in the ground, uh, but I don't know if maybe I was being stepped on. You, you know, everything happened really fast. And did you do you have any thought on the um, you know Odell uh, same play? Did you get a look at that? Uh, along yeah. Well, again, I, I defer back to to our experts who I mean they do that for every every injury. That's what that's what we do. We have people investigate it and, and judge it, and we have you know and we get our results on on what we think happened and, and how how much of it's related to the field surface. Thank you, Nate. We'll go to Jeff Fidel for our next question. Hey, JC, when you look at the numbers, um, the Raiders don't do a lot defensively, only seven, seven sacks. But what do you see from from their defense? Well, they have a really good defensive line coach. Um, uh, they're explosive off the ball, looking for knockback uh, and do a lot of movement, do a lot of movement. So you have to be kind of all on the same page across the offensive line, making sure we know where we're going, how we're going to get there, both on run and pass. Um, that, that's one of the things with teams that move so much. Um, usually you expect it on third downs with twists, but these guys will move and twist and, um, you know, pirate right in the run game. So you have to be aware of that at all times and make sure both the backside and the front side of the, of the run are, are, are ready for it and have the call in place to pick it all up. Marla Reiner, you have our next question. Yeah, JC, does it almost feel like, Life with your life managing an injury is becoming more common than the without, you know what I mean? Like, it's like you've got this routine almost. Yeah, I mean, again, the, the injury rate's 100% uh, in, in this business. So uh, I think everybody gets a little banged up. Everybody has something going on. There, there's stuff that's, um, you know, everybody, everybody knows about. We've got people fighting through rib injuries and, and different injuries. It's just it's part of the business, and especially this part of the year. It's week eight. I'm sure everybody's got something they're dealing with uh, that's lingering, and you know, you hope to get through this week and get to the body and get some time off your your feet and, and, and get your body back right. But that's what this business is about: people playing hurt, play, people playing injured. And you know, as you go forward with that Odell, I mean, how confident are you about the, you know, the adjustments? I mean, it, it could be, you know, some dramatic adjustments needed. I don't know. But how do you feel about how your team, your team's ability to cope? I think the guys that, that need to step up will step up. Uh, I think we saw that last week. It, it's tough to replace a guy like Odell. I mean, just that, that talent, that ability, and I think that respect that the defense gives them uh, and, and what that does to our game plan. I, I think that that's tough to, to uh, recreate, but uh, I know the guys, uh, how much preparation they put in, how much work they put in this, this off season, this training camp and, and the weeks in practice that they'll be ready to step up and, and make plays for us. Thank you. Thank you, Marla. Tom Withers, you have a next question. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, JC. JC, what about off the field? Um, in terms of just, you know, inspiring guys and being a motivator. Coach Stefanski said that Odell brings the juice like nobody else. How do you replace a, losing a guy from that standpoint? Yeah, I mean, we, we still have a lot of guys that are that are leaders on this team. We've got Joel, we've got Baker, we've got Jarvis. 
uh, we've got guys who, who get the team going, especially the offense. So, again, it, it's never easy to replace a guy um, both in a leadership sense in, in Odell as well as on the field with Odell. Um, but other guys will have to step up and, and do more both on the field and as in a leadership capacity. I remember last year you said you kind of you clicked with Odell a little bit early on. You guys had a little bit of a bond there. Do you think he maybe sometimes is misunderstood in terms of what he means to a team and to his teammates? Yeah, I think that's been, that's been pretty clear for a while now. I, I think where what people look at him from the outside versus inside the locker room are are very different. I think he's always been a very good teammate. It's what we were told before we even got here. When you ask guys who played with him in the past, we were told that he's he's a great teammate great guy in the locker room to have so um that that's been clear after we we got to know each other and other guys in the locker room got to know him uh, he's all about the team uh, so it, it's tough to be, you know one of your one of your brothers go down go to scott patrick for our next one hey jc the running game numbers haven't been the same the last three weeks and i'm sure part of that's nick not being out there but if defense is really made more of a concerted effort to stop the run the last three weeks? Yeah, I mean, you, you think back to those games we had, I believe the, the Colts was was three weeks ago, uh, really good defense, really good run-stopping defense, um, do a lot of movement. Uh, then you go to Pittsburgh, we fall behind in the game script, um, not really a lot of opportunities to run uh, when you fall behind. Um, and then last week, I think we were just a few blocks away um, on, a, on a couple plays where it, it could have been more. Um, but we just didn't finish the right way. So th there's things to improve on. I think we're really close to getting back on. Uh, again, Nick um, is a great runner, but but Kareem does a heck of a job in Dearness as well. Um, so yeah, I think there's still more meat on the bone that we have to we have to get in the future, and hope we can bounce back. Do you think? I mean, you mentioned the effect Odell has on a defense. Do you think without him there, teams will pay even more attention to the run game and make it tougher? More bodies in the box? Maybe. I mean, we'll we'll, we'll see. All right, thanks. Thanks, Scott. We have time for two more before the coach will go to Zach Jackson and then Tony Grossi. Zach Jackson, go ahead. Hey, JC, I'm just curious with, you know, everything different this year. Is we're at week eight. Is there a sense of normalcy by now to this abnormal season, or is that not a term you would use? Um, I, I wouldn't say normalcy. I, I, don't think, um, I don't think you want normalcy. Uh, I think with everything going on, um, when, when you fall into – when I hear normalcy, I feel like people then fall into a sense of relaxation, a sense of, uh, you know, we have everything under control. We're good to go. We no longer have to think about this. We can just go through the motions. I, I don't think you want that. I don't think um, guys are looking at that way. Um, you know, we've even recently enhanced the protocols um, to make them stronger and um, make sure we're, we're doing everything to get through a season. So I, I don't think anybody's looking at it as a normal season still. There are still changes going on. There are still things we have to focus on. Um, and again, like we've always said, it, we, we expect it to be able to start. Um, it, it's going to take a constant, concerted effort to finish. Uh, and we're a little over halfway there now with training camp included. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done. So I, I don't think we, we want normalcy. Uh, I think we want everybody to stay uh, with coronavirus top of mind and all the, all the important things we have to do in order to finish the season. Last question, Tony Grossi. All right, as we reach the halfway point, um, I'm wondering, JC, I know you guys will study this scientifically, but do you feel that injuries have been affected by the, uh, you know, the training camp and the protocols? Uh, you, you were a little worried early on that there would be more injuries. Do you get any sense of it? Is it normal year? Yeah, so th there's a little lag time on, on the, that data. So um, that will continue to be looked at. Uh, it's always going to be tough with a, a one-year sample size um, with, with outliers and things like that. But uh, I, I know we are currently going through all that information, that data. We've, we've done it for, for the information we have. But again, there's a lag time. Um, so that, that probably won't be all figured out in totality of the season until a month or so after the season. Um, but, but that's something we are very interested in. Um, all of it, not just soft tissue, but also heat related illness from training camp, concussions, all that stuff that we track and, and see if we're improving on. Um, that's all stuff we'll, we'll have to look at and, and get a clear answer, most likely at the end of the season when we have the full data set um, with as much information as possible. And the fact that the Raiders are the most penalized team for violations of protocols uh, during a season in your role as president, do you 
have to speak to teams about this, the players, the leadership, or anything like that? Um, no, I mean, we, we stay in contact with our reps. So we, each team has, has reps for the union. Um, so we make sure we have our union calls where we talk about the importance of staying on our teammates and make sure we understand it. I, I think that's, I think that's understood. There, there's going to be you know, mistakes made. Uh, we hope to correct those and, and make sure that the protocols when enforced and done properly, keep this season going. Um, but it, it, it really takes everybody. It takes all of us, not just players. It takes the staff. Uh, it takes everybody who walks into one of these facilities doing the right thing at all times, both at the facility and away from the facility in, in order to finish the season. 